The History of DNA, presented by me, Giancarlo Clemente, and my partner, Cassandra Salazar. What is DNA? DNA is a self-replicating material that's in every living organism. In simplest terms, it is the carrier of all genetic information. It contains the instructions needed for the organism to develop, grow, survive, and reproduce. It's one long molecule that contains our genetic code or its recipe. This recipe is the starting point for our development. But the DNA interaction with outside influence such as lifestyle, environment, and nutrition ultimately form the beginning. While most DNA is found in the nucleus of a cell, small amount can also be found in the mitochondria, which generates energy so cells function properly. Perhaps the most fascinating part of the process is the fact that nearly every cell in your body has the same DNA. What is DNA made of? DNA is made of molecules known as nucleotides. Each nucleotide contains a sugar and phosphate group as well as nitrogen bases. These nitrogen bases are further broken down into four types including adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine. DNA structure is a double-stranded helix. It resembles in the look of a twisted ladder. The sugar and the phosphate are nucleotide strands that form the long sides. The nitrogen bases are rungs. Every rung is actually two types of nitrogen bases that pair together to form the complete rung and hold long strands of nucleotides together. Remember there are four types of nitrogen bases and they are paired together specifically. Adenine pairs with thymine and guanine with cytosine. Biologists in the 1940s had difficulties accepting DNA as the genetic material because of the apparent simplicity of its chemistry. DNA was known to be a long polymer composed of only four types of subunits which resemble one another chemically. Early in the 1950s, DNA was difficult examined by x-ray diffraction analysis, a technique for determining the three-dimension atomic structure of a molecule. A DNA molecule consists of two long poly polynucleotide chains composed of four types of nucleotide subunits. Each of these chains is known as a DNA chain or a DNA strand. Hydrogen bonds between the base pro portion of the nucleotides hold the two chains together. Genes carry bio biological information that must be copied accurately for the transmission to the next generation each time a cell division to form two daughters. DNA encodes information through the order of or sequence of the nucleotide along each strand. Each base A, C, T, or G can, can, be, can be considered as a letter in a four-letter alphabet that spells out biological messages in the chemical structure of the DNA. The linear sequence of the nucleotide in genes must therefore somehow spell out the linear sequence of amino acids in a protein. The exact con corris correspondence between the four-letter nucleotide alphabet or DNA and the three-letter amino acid alphabet or proteins, the a genetic code is not obvious for the DNA structure. It looks, it took over a decade after the discovery of the double helix before it was worked out. The complete set of information in organism DNA is called genomes, and it carries the information for all proteins the organisms will ever synthesize. The amount of information contained in genomes is staggering. For example, a typical Human cell contains two meters of DNA. Written out in the four-letter nucleotide alphabet, a nucleotide sequence of a very small human gene occupies a quarter of a page of text, while the complete sequence of nucleotides in the human genomes will fill more than thousands, more than a thousand books. In addition to the critical information, it carries instruction to about 30,000 distant proteins. At each vision, the cell must copy its genome to pass it to another daughter cell. The discovery of the structure of DNA also revealed the principle that makes this copying possible. Because each strand of DNA contains a sequence of nucleotides that's, exact, that's exactly complementary to the nucleotide sequence of its partner strand, each strand can act as a template or mode for the synthesis of a new complementary strand. In other words, we design we designated the two strands as S and S. Strand S can serve as a template for making a new strand. While strand S can serve as a template to making a new strand S. Thus the genetic information in DNA can accurately copy to the beautifully beautifully simply process in which strand S separates from strand S and each sep and each separate strand then serves as a template for 
introduction as a new complementary partner strand that is identical to its former partner. The, abil the ability of each strand of DNA molecule to act as a template producing complementary strands enables a cell to copy or replicate its genes before passing them on to its descendants. Genetic information is carried in the linear sequence of nucleotides and DNA. Each molecule of the DNA is a double helix formed from two complementary strands of nucleotides held together by hydrogen bonds between C, G and C and A and T base pairs. Duplication of the genetic information occurs by the use of one DNA strand as the template for formation as a complementary strand. The genetic information stored in an organism's DNA contains the instructions for all the proteins in the organisms will ever synthesize. How was DNA discovered? DNA was discovered in 1869 by a Swiss researcher, Friedrich Mischer, who was originally trying to study the composition of lymphoid cells, white blood cells. Instead, he isolated a new molecule called nuclein DNA with associated proteins from a cell nucleus. While Mister was the first to find DNA as a distinct molecule, several other researchers and scientists have contributed to our relative understandings of DNA as, well as we know it today. And it wasn't until the early 1940s that DNA role in a genetic inheritance was begun to be researched and understood. Fun facts. Your DNA could stretch from the earth to the sun and back 600 times if unwound and linked together. The strands of your DNA in your cells would be 6 feet long with 100 trillion cells in your body. That means if all your DNA were put end to end, it would stretch over 110 billion miles. That's hundreds of round trips to the sun. Another one. We're all 99.9% .9 alike of 3 billion base pairs in human genome. Only 0.1% are unique to us, while the other 0.1% is still what makes us unique. It means we're all more similar than we're different. Uh, another one. Genes make up only about 3% of your DNA. Genes are short segments of DNA, but not all DNA and genes are all told genes are only 1-3% to of your DNA. The rest of your DNA controls the activity of your genes. Fun facts. A DNA test can reveal that you're more Irish than your siblings. Your sister could be much more Irish than you. And this is true for any over 350 regions covered by the ancestry DNA test. So your sibling could also be more or less British, Nigerian, or Scandinavian than you are. The human genotype contains 3 billion base pairs of DNA. DNA molecules are shaped like twisted ladders and rungs on that ladder are made of bases, adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Locked together in pairs with hydrogen bonds, the really cool part is that they pair up in a very specific way. A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. Your DNA could link you to places you'd never imagined. Genetics has the power to tell you things you never dreamed of knowing from just a DNA in your saliva.